everyone, and welcome to this special episode of The Citizen, where I am the guest. And Brisa Caro, please introduce yourself. Hello, I am the editor-in-chief here at The Lumberjack, um, and I've gotten to work very closely with Daisy throughout the election process. Um, so I wanted to come on here and kind of talk about our experience throughout the last few months and leading up to um, Election Day. So, Daisy, you brought this uh, idea of election coverage and the podcast show to me um, in late August. Yeah. Do you want to talk about how, you know, you came from August to being here? Okay, well, the funny thing is that I actually had this idea since January, and um, I just, I talked to some people about it, and everyone felt like it was too ambitious. Everyone felt like it was too big of an undertaking. But then I brought it to you <laughs> instead of the other people. And you said yes, and you let me present it. Presented it to Austin, who's sitting by, there behind the camera. And Austin was pretty into it, and we just formed a team. And then after that, it was pretty easy to get that coverage rolling. Yeah. yeah. And our team has gotten to do a lot this you know, election yeah. cycle. Uh, we've been able to expand a lot um, from our core team to on election day, we had like 15 or so people out um, covering stories in the community and uh, talking to people. So um, that was very interesting to yeah. see how, as student journalists, we were able to gain momentum and get more people uh, interested in being part of this historic coverage. Um, so as student journalists, um, what has it really been like being part of this coverage for you? Being a part of this coverage has been, first off, amazing. It's been so much fun. Um, thank you for all the help and guidance along the way. Of course. And um, it's also been difficult, you know, like when you are a college student, people don't speak to you like they would speak to a professional. People don't, you know, think of you first. You're kind of an afterthought. And so it's not really reflective of how important college voters are in this election, you know. Of course, all these press people want to appeal to young people, but they just don't have those connections with the student papers, and they're not always reaching out, so you have to really, you know, get your own position in there. And more than a few times, I had to email people and say, hey, wait, <laughs> where can we get into this event? And Jason, who's sitting also behind the camera, uh, you know, had a similar experience when he went with Chloe Legay to um, Joe Biden's apology speech. And, you know, you were there for that, too. And just seeing, like, Chloe kind of hustling and calling everyone that Chloe needs to call, finally getting that approval, you know, you don't expect it because... You feel like, oh, well, I'm just a college kid. Like, why would they want me there? And so seeing Chloe, you know, crying, going, going to see our president speak at such a historical event, it's just amazing moments like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of the learning process along the way for us has been finding how to get on those press lists and who to get in contact with. You have a lot of campaign managers in your phone now. Yeah, too many, but I don't know if they're campaign managers anymore. Yeah, you know? that's true. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's um, it's really a, a, a big part of this process has just been like making connections with people. And that's another part of it is that in four years, the staff covering the next election is going to be completely different. And we're going to be like these two old farts that <laughs> who are doing whoever the heck knows. And so... Um, that's why, you know, these college publications aren't always getting on the list is because we're not consistent. But um, it has been amazing meeting some of these people. Yeah. yeah. And one of the connections that paid off really well was um, when we got Deb Holland to come and speak with yeah. us here in the School of Comp. Yeah. And you got to interview her. Yeah, that was crazy. So I was in class and I guess that's another thing people don't think about is that we're full-time students as well. And I was in class and I had a missed call and a text that said, call me back. And I did. And it was for an interview with the secretary. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. And some of the areas that we've had a lot of issue with is um, getting denied access yeah. to some rallies. I know that we applied for three Trump 
um, mm. Trump or J.D. Vance rallies and were denied for each of them. And then you had to reach back out to get coverage um, on the one that you went with NAZ um, down to the valley. Yeah, so we've never gotten easy access into a Trump rally. We've always been, you know, going through some kind of hoops to see the former president. Um, that rally in particular, I, I was able to talk to the press lead and get in. And then when I we all woke up, so we were driving with the broadcast people and they have to get there really early. And we are at the door and we're not on the list because, you know, we were on the list, but we have this email approval. And so it's kind of stuff like that, just showing everyone your email and trying to get in or, you know, we had everyone, I think, buy tickets to Tucker Carlson. And so we're always just kind of jumping through those hoops. But it is important to jump through those hoops and give an effort, I think. Yeah. And when we had staff out on Halloween um, for the yeah. the two rallies that happened um, down in the Valley with um, Trump and then the Tucker Carlson one, and our staff did buy tickets, but they were way high up in yeah. that stadium. And so um, when you look at like our photo coverage for the Tucker Carlson show um, and then the Harris rally, it's obviously completely different because our staff was way up high and then at the other instance down below. So, um, yeah. you know, it was a little bit harder for us to have like that consistent coverage when sure. we were denied Um the access that we applied for um and so like jumping into you know northern arizona and the type of campaigning that's been up here um it's been primarily like democratic campaigning you know we've had tim waltz out here um both in window rock and then at heritage square like that um weekend right before the election and you were out there well up until now you know it's really been at the discretion of the staff who's working at the paper. And a lot of the times, these Democratic blue events and rallies will fall into our laps. But I think this uh, semester, it's it's been no different. You know, we live in a predominantly blue town. We live in a college town. So we cover what's relevant to our community. But we've really been seeking out, you know, these uh Big events that are happening, like log cabin Republicans for uh, gay Republicans just launched in Northern Arizona chapter. We covered that. We covered the launch of the Trump Force 47 office. And there has been a lot of our regular following on Instagram pretty upset that we are platforming those events. And, um, you know, we're just representing what's happening in our community. And I think maybe this election will have some of those people who had that reaction realizing, you know, oh, dang, um, this is this is what it's like, you know, this, is, this isn't just something we're picking out out of the, it's not a needle in the hay that we're platforming, this is what our community is like. Yeah, and I think, you know, you talked about doing some like traveling out mm -hmm. to um, Prescott and we had staff out at Window Rock and, um, down in the valley for rallies um, and really been able to get a lot of people out to a lot of these events. I think, you know, as we are a news desert up in northern Arizona um, and newsrooms are smaller and smaller by the year, we have this kind of unique opportunity where our full staff is uh, 65 people. The people who've been covering news has been around like 10 to 15, depending. And so we've been able to get more people out to these events, even though it has been like a lot of travel, we've had some fun like road trips with people going out to different things. Um, but one that I, you mentioned the log cabin Republicans was one that kind of came up very, I hadn't even heard of them. And then we got sent a, a kind of tip off of that yeah. from our, one of our old staffers. Um, and it was really interesting to go down there and see this like very unique almost niche perspective of Republicans um, and what they were thinking and how they were filling kind of a a gap of representation in Northern Arizona um, for that yeah. demographic and how they felt. You talked to some of them down there. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is really nice to be able to send a big group of people. And a big part of that is how excited people have been about 
the election and going to cover it, you know, once we got this project going and I think people saw what we were doing, we got a lot of interest on the paper and it's just been amazing. You know, we can have a videographer, um, we can have a photographer and a writer on one event and you don't always get that. Some of these rallies you're covering, you know, there's just a solo reporter out there from big publications, you know, um, so we're really blessed that we can work as a team because the coverage, I think you would agree, is so much better when we can get a good team out. Definitely. And I think with a lot of journalists these days, like burnout is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been able to lean on each other mm -hmm. traveling in teams. Yeah. But I think, you know, even up to Election Day and after when we have done all this coverage and been out there and, you know, jumping at any opportunity we can get, I mean, how do you feel like our staff has dealt with burnout and, you know, kind of going forward, how we deal with that? I think our staff has been pretty good about this. You know, it, it's a lot about taking care of yourself and it's a lot about keeping a good work environment so that, you know, when we all are working overtime, if that work doesn't feel so bad, and I would really like to say I think we have a pretty good working environment because, you know, you don't get 20 people wanting to cover the election if they don't enjoy your company, you know, volunteering their time. So I think it's just a lot about maintaining positivity and um, a good work environment and and then taking care of yourself. That's yeah. Nice. And I think, you know, part of all the excitement for this type of coverage is just knowing how much of an opportunity this is. Like, we're never going to be student journalists again during an election yeah. cycle. And so being able to have people jump in on um, coverage, even though they have busy, you know, class schedules or work schedules, personal lives, and um, being able to still have as much enthusiasm, I think, is because it's so historic. And, um, you know, depending on... Whichever way the presidential um, race went, either way, it was going to be historic. I mean, it was going to be the first woman president or the first uh, president who or the second president who returned to office um, for a non consecutive term. Yeah. Um, and, and then the first felon, the first felon yeah. as well. So um, either way, it was going to be an interesting turnout. And so I think that helped people, you know, kind of find that motivation um, and to really jump into a part of history. I, I had a moment when we were watching um, Kamala's uh, concession speech in our newsroom and we had like people just kind of like joining in to watch it um, as we were playing it and all kind of gathered around the TV. One of those like historic moments when um, people were tuning into something live and um, just, you know, different feelings and um, kind of just like coming to a close what the election campaign was. Um, and, you know, a lot of the people that we've talked to on the Democratic side, like campaign managers, like their jobs are done now. And so it's just interesting to know the connections and the people we've talked to along the way, like where they're going from here um, and also where we go from here, like what we do for coverage to follow up now that, you know, we have Trump as a president, um, and I know that you have some plans for the podcast. Yeah, we, we have a lot of exciting stuff planned on the podcast, and I think it's going to start with discussing at a local level some of these propositions that were passed and what the implications of those might be, and then um, just figuring out, you know, a lot of us are seniors, graduating seniors, and in May, we'll be starting our careers as soon as the new president is stepping into office, you know, he'll just be a couple months in at that point. And covering a person who is, you know, he's the anti-establishment candidate. He's the anti-media training candidate. And it's an interesting challenge to uh, capture someone who isn't necessarily, you know, trained to tell you the most specific information at the most specific time, you know, he speaks his mind, he shares on emotions, and, um, you know, sometimes he's, he's very direct in how he says it. And so that's going to be our challenge. And I think we're just going to start learning how to cover the new president, you know, um, 
starting with what his presidency might look like. Yeah. Well, I'm very excited um, to be part of that coverage and, you know, work with you next semester as well. It's been a fun semester for us, you know, being able to group together and all work um, as a team to get out in the community. We've talked to so many people. Um, so it's been, you know, a learning experience and overall fun. You know, yeah. there's been some highs and lows, but um, it's been a fun time. So thank you for letting me, you know, speak with you on this. And thanks for coming <laughs> be, on The Citizen. Be the host for once. <laughs> yeah, I've loved not being the host. And thank you because, you know, like I said, when I talked about this project originally, a lot of people felt like it was too ambitious and I was told no. So thank you for yesing me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Well, that's it for this episode of The Citizen. Thank you so much for watching and join in next week for more election coverage.